Welcome back to the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. I am CDJ, joined by two guys who would never opt out on joining the show. Well, unless they till they do. It's Tommy and JB Huskers. Guys, how's it going? Pretty good. I'm I'm signed on full full uh, nil deal. Yeah, where's my six hundred? It's in. I'm the mail. just waiting on the copy of the game. Really? Well, that too. Now beggars can't be choosers. Uh, a lot of news this week. A lot of news. So we'll get right to it. The big one uh, occurred on Tuesday. Kirk Herbstreet joined his sons, Ty and Jake, on their show on Street Talk on YouTube, talking college football 25. It was not clear going into the show what he would or say or would not say. We did get a, a couple tidbits, the big one being two minutes into the show, he talks about the possibility of multiple commentary teams. We're just going to play this clip and let everyone decide and let him hear what he said himself. So anyway, I, I, uh, I think there's going to be, as you're doing different games, there'll be different broadcast teams. Doing Ooh. the game, yeah. All right, yeah. So that's that cool. That'll be Never that's a major, done. major difference between what it you know what it's been in the past and and what they're going to do now. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 exciting. I mean, I I love the game. I played a game since I. Okay, just in case people didn't hear that. The first sentence. I think there's going to be as you're doing different games, there will be different broadcast teams doing the game. That sends loan. Kind of makes you think, well, maybe he's just hypothesizing. Maybe he doesn't know exactly. But that second sentence makes it sound like he knows when he goes, yeah, yeah. That'll be a major, major difference between what it's been in the past and what they're going to do now. So I know at the same time, until EA says it, we always take everything with a grain of salt. And throughout this interview, Kirk at times says he's not aware fully what's going on in the game. There's other seg segments where it very much sounds like he knows what's going on, at least in certain aspects. Guys, do you take that at face value and at literal? Do you expect the multiple commentary teams after hearing that clip? Before that clip, no, I, I didn't expect it. Um, but, you know, after hearing that and the kind of thinking about all the different personalities that are being included, it kind of starts to add up and make sense that, you know, they'll they'll have different uh, announcing crews that, you know, it won't be Desmond and Kirk together. It'll be Desmond and, and somebody else providing the play-by-play. -play. So, I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see how it works and and is it that you just get uh kirk and brad for the big games or if if you know all, if you're mm -hmm. a p5 you always get them or whatever it may be so uh but yeah i i think i believe based upon that that it'll there's a that it'll be in the game now yeah it'll be interesting to see because like uh they'll have fowler too right yep it's believed that he and fowler because they've recorded together <laughs> during the show he talks about obviously they do a lot of remote recording but there are times they are have work together recording so the belief initially like we even said on the previous show it seemed like we did the math that those two would mm -hmm. be the main announcers but now it sounds like some of those other guys could be announcers could be yeah this could be your uh you could probably get chris and uh yeah kirk at your night game or game of the week or something mm -hmm. like that um your prime time game you know and is reese davis also going to be doing some yep. stuff too i mean he, he does games too so you never know uh it's interesting because you know you know, when they EA did it with March Madness, they had two different networks. What if they mm -hmm. surprise us with two different networks? That'd be even wilder. That might not be a year one thing, but that might be down the road. Because uh, mm -hmm. when March Madness did it, they did it with um, CBS. And I can't remember, was it ESPN? It, it was ESPN and CBS, yep. Yeah. And they had the entire packages for both mm -hmm. networks, which was pretty wild. So I'd love to see uh, NCAA do that down the road, possibly. Some other things he mentioned during the course of the show, this is his 14th year involved with the title. He still has 19 recording sessions to go. He's been recording for over a year. His sons, they thought he was done, uh, but Kirk made it sound like starting on Tuesday, he was getting back into the recording process. Uh, by the time he finishes for the year, he estimates that he will have recorded 80 hours of commentary. I don't know if that's 80 hours in, in front of a camera or if that's 80 hours of lines we get to hear. He's not real clear on that. They asked him about scanning, and at the same time, they kind of mentioned, did you ever wear the ping pong balls? Uh, so I don't know if they implied face scan versus mocap. Kirk says he hasn't done that, and I believe he means that in terms of either scanning or mocap, which ties into the next point. He is unsure if college game day will actually be in the game. Again, we should take everything with a grain of salt. I know Kirk throughout this interview says, I don't know everything going on. He acts like he doesn't know all the latest technology, but then there's other aspects when he talks about the game even historically, he knows his stuff. So it's, it's sometimes I wonder if he's bluffing or if he's being more than honest. On this case, he's he, I would take him at face value, unsure if game day will be in. He says he's done nothing for the studio side, just voice work. So I took that to mean he's done nothing that he expects where his actual face will be in the game, which I don't think we thought that would be in there anyway. He does not believe that Corso is involved. 
but he does reveal that Corso will be back in real life next year for college game day. Uh, the Suns, it was kind of a funny moment during the show. They said, Dad, you know, you had mentioned before, meaning off camera, microtransactions being in the game. And I thought that was hilarious <laughs> that they used that term. And they asked about Ultimate Team, and Kirk quickly shut that down, saying he's unable to talk about things like that in the game. I think you could almost hear EA talking to him legal. <laughs> he knew that was going to be coming down the line if he said any more. And a pretty key quote here. He said, the production team has a focus on making this a different experience than Madden, which we've heard from a lot of people involved in this game, especially the ESPN talents who have talked a little bit. Student sections, traditions, marching bands, mascots. Now, does that mean that all those things are in, or is that just things he's bringing up that are the college experience in his eyes? Guys, of all those notes there, what else kind of kind of stood out to you before we get on to the next big piece of news? I think the fact that they haven't done any face scans of them, then that to me further cements that they would have multiple announcing crews. Why are you going to have all of these people if you're not going to have an on-set college game day with scanned mm. likenesses? Um, mm. So to me, that mm. just further cements it from my standpoint. So, And then like you said, in terms of uh, making it feel uh, a different experience than Madden, they're going to have student sections and traditions and marching bands, but uh, with, uh, marching bands, obviously, we don't know, but uh, they'll have all, all of those, but not necessarily all of those for all the teams. You know, it may be just some of the teams have bits and pieces of those or whatever. But uh, but yeah, I, I fully expect most of those would be in anyways. That is interesting. He still has 19 sessions to go when mm -hmm. we're about three to four months out, which makes you wonder, is he coming in for some real life content i find that hard to believe during the mm -hmm. season just how busy he is with uh between mm -hmm. uh the the amazon and espn mm -hmm. obligations but 19 sounds like a lot with just a few months to go in the uh, for the title to come out i thought well, as and, well he did say i'll let you go Tom, real quick but he did say and now he may not have been most accurate on this he said i have 19 to go before the game launches i mm -hmm. don't think he's going to be recording up to the rumored July release date. I got to think he's done within a month, give or take, so they can get all the stuff in the game. Tommy, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, you know, hypothesis. We've talked about this before. If Madden has multiple announcement teams, maybe he has 19 sessions between NCAA and Madden. You know, it may That's not just all be for, for EA college football. Um, I mean, who knows? Again, it, we have no idea if Madden's going to have multiple teams, but it sounded like they would. And yep. it makes sense that Kirk be involved in both of them. You know, why mm -hmm. pay, you know, why have multiple people coming in when you can have the same guy doing the same job? I don't know if it's they don't like it or they realize they can spend their time in better places. But in, say, in Madden, when you do franchise mode, and let's say you go to the cutscenes with the player or the coaches in the back, they always move the camera behind your person who's talking so they never have to animate the face. Because in a lot of games, if it doesn't match up, it looks awful and is distracting from the experience. I'm going to agree here and say college game may not be in, but it may not be a visual sense because that way they don't have to animate the faces at all. Maybe it's an audio. Maybe you get the feel of being a game day, but you don't actually see the game day, which I think may detract. But I would say an audio version is better than a no version. Yeah, for sure. The To do a true college mm -hmm. game day to where it could be dynamic and they have different conversations mm -hmm. every week and everything. Yeah, that would be very difficult to mm -hmm. to make it be able to mm -hmm. switch up from from time to time. So yeah. it makes sense. You gotta, uh, go ahead. You got to wonder, too, how many people are would I mean, how many people are going to skip through that, too? You know, yeah. Is it I really would, worth doing anything in depth with that? Yeah, I would be the first person. I'll watch it the first time. Oh, that's neat, but why am I going to yeah. watch it the next time? You know, especially when games take sixty minutes as it is, and if you're trying to get trying to squeeze it an online dynasty, uh, you know, between everything you got to mm -hmm. do in your real life, you know, uh, you know, people, most people are going to just kind of bypass that. If and so, I'd be surprised if there's anything quite in depth in there. It, it probably just something much similar to what Madden does in their pregame mm -hmm. kind of deal, which I skip all the time, anyways, too. So. <laughs> The only way I can think of they get around is if they stack all of it. If you have the audio of the commentary commentators doing the game day over the visuals of the entrance and traditions, if they do multiple at once, and maybe that's more engaging versus game day into intros, into tradition, into game start, because that is obviously a lot. Uh, and we're just theorizing here. Maybe maybe you stack it. Maybe that's one way to get through it. Maybe somebody comes up during the load screen. Uh, who knows? We're probably putting the cart in front of the horse here, but... But I agree, it's going to be interesting how they, what they do. With 80 hours, it did seem like a lot. On Monday, we found out that over 10,000 players had opted into the game in just, at that time, 12 days in. 12 days in, 10,000-plus athletes 
eight weeks to go, if my math is correct. Uh, in my mind, I don't know what EA's goal was. That seems pretty darn impressive and a pretty good sign for the game. Uh, just to get a grasp on those numbers. Uh, first off, we have to keep in mind 131 teams, and we'll get into why 131 and not 134 here in a little bit. If you take the 131 times 85, that's 11,135 players got contracts. So you think if you have over 10,000, and John Reesberg tweeted out later that day on Monday, they're getting more every hour. So let's just put it at the 10,000 number. Uh, to me, this put it into better terms and scale to understand how close they are to getting everybody. That's the equivalent on those 131 teams to only have about six to eight players missing. Or if you just, let's say you filled in every team as the net players came in, which I know it doesn't happen that way, but just for example, that means they're less than 12 teams away from having all those players in. Uh, to me, that just blew my mind that they had it, but it also it's not, not surprising because I think a lot of good players said they would have done this for free. But then when you offer 600 to $700 plus, mm -hmm. who's going to say no when you have to just push a button? Yeah, for sure. I mean, at this point, it, it's too easy for them to just sign in. Everybody wants to be in the game anyways, in general. Uh, everybody wants them to be in the game as well. So mm -hmm. it, it all makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, even if you go back to the Ed O'Bannons of, of their day, if you had asked them in the moment while they're in college, they probably would have signed the dotted line themselves. Mm -hmm regardless of of the incentive package in in my mind mm. um so i mean to me it, it makes complete sense it is it is very positive news to see all of them sign in and, and opt in uh so that to me that's obviously nothing but a great thing i just i hope we can get 99 percent uh right. but you know this is this is a great progress in what two weeks now so mm -hmm. yeah i didn't expect it to be this high this fast um but it's great to see it's great to see everybody buying in uh, most people buying in, but it's it's good to see that at least. And, you know, it, and it probably holds well for the future too, you know, mm -hmm. and as they try to, as they try to go along and, and, and uh, year by year and, and, and try to expand on it. it. It's really good to see the fact that, that this is already at a high percentage so fast. It sounds like these guys, they really understand, like, this is more for the fans than them, even though yeah. a lot of these guys, this is the biggest anti deal they'll probably ever get. I think they realize so, a lot of this is yeah. for the fans and themselves. They're they're immortalized in this and that they know a lot of their friends and family think this is cool to see that someone they know in a game. Uh, I wish I had gotten the name or remember it without my head, but I we did have somebody who follows us on Twitter who said that he's a, a coach and I don't remember where, but the, and he did not say who, but he says he has several players who are playing at high, high, pro, high profile programs and he says he can't wait to see them in the game. So that kind of tells you like the reach and scope of this. So I get, I get it. So why, when I did the math, what I used 131 instead of 134 fan nation noah henderson there he's a professor i don't did not catch where he had mentioned that the service academies yes the teams will be in the game the stadiums air force navy army will be in there however as of now the players are not eligible to opt in federal law prohibits the student athletes from participation in nil engagements as the federal code puts it it will see them using their public office for private gain it does sound like though he said that they are working to try to get government approval to get them in who knows what that means especially in an election year maybe somebody wants a free win maybe nobody's even thinking about it who <laughs> knows if this flies up the flagpole but but that's where we're at the schools will be in the players as of last report still up in the air so that's why when we talk about the teams and the rosters filling up as of right now we're just looking at 131 and not 134 yeah i mean to me the it you got to figure out a way to get them in the game. And I understand all the complex complexities of it. The government wants to control whatever they want to control. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, you know, you got to figure out a way to get them in the game, whether or not they're, they themselves are actually profiting it from it mm -hmm. directly, or, you know, if they, if their school just gets a major donation in, in lieu of the players getting something, you know, something just to kind of, to me, it makes sense. They're a D1 school. They use their likeness every week for, uh, for you know, games and for commercials and things like that. It, it mm -hmm. makes sense. Why can't they be in the game as well? Yeah, there's got to be a way around uh, the, uh, you know, NIL where they can just sign and not get paid for it, uh, where there, there's got to be a way with uh, the fact that, you know, it, though, you know, that that they can't take any money will help. They maybe still have to sign something, but you know, it's something that's possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully I, you know, I don't know. I, I would, uh, assume that this has been thought of well before now. So uh, hopefully something is in place uh, or an idea is in place that, uh, 
can uh, legally be into the game for those guys. And I'm, I'm sure EA and those have thought about when you deal with the government, you don't know what you're going to get in terms of speed. Uh, it did mention in his article that the schools have said that since the players cannot take money, they will not take compensation from EA. So when EA pays those likenesses and rights to other schools, those three schools will not be taking any money. So as we mentioned, 10,000 plus players in, we got our first, what I would call major holdout or opt out. Though technically, it sounds like, yes, we heard that people may opt out. They still have until April 30th to decide. So that nothing is official, official. But the first one, Arch Manning of Texas, the backup, pretty highly coveted recruit a couple of years ago. Of course, of that Manning name, you are going to be very followed and very watched. It came out, Anwar Robinson from orangebloods.com put out Monday evening. He said, multiple people have told me Texas registered quarterback Arch Manning will not opt into EA Sports College Football 25. I'm told Arch is focused on playing football on the field. Needless to say, after that came out, he got skewered online, uh, fair or otherwise. He he got Quinn skewered, if you will. To add a little context more on Tuesday, ESPN came out and Mark Schleybach talked to somebody else, another source, who had said that Manning wanted to wait until he was the guy at Texas, according to his source. And I don't feel like I'm going out on a limb here by saying that his source, Schleybach's source about being the man, probably came from the Manning camp. And Richardson's quote about being focused on playing football on the field probably also came from the Manning camp. Uh, what's unclear is, is how did it come out that he's not opting in? Uh, granted, it doesn't matter where that came from, but I think if you start to kind of connect the dots to figure out how this came out and why this came out. Monday morning, we had the word of 10,000 plus players. Monday evening, we get our first holdout news. I doubt EA said anything because they have eight weeks to go after this guy. So I doubt they cared at this point who had said no. Uh, it makes you wonder if somebody at Texas talked to Anwar Richardson, who is a Texas reporter, covers the team very closely. You got to think that might have came internally a little bit. Maybe it's to put a little pressure on the Mannings to, to get him in there. And it is worth noting, Arch Manning, there were a lot of speculation last year that he was earning millions and millions from his NIL. Well, around playoff time, it came out, there was speculation that he was earning more from NIL and Brock Purdy was earning from his rookie contract with the Niners. Well, in December, around playoff time in an interview, uh, finally the Mannings kind of set the record straight. That he had only done one NIL deal. That was a deal with Panini America. And a $100,000 proceeds went to a nonprofit. That was the only NIL deal he's done. He's not active on social media. And in an interview, he came out and basically said, talking about this, he goes, you'd have to ask my dad about the NIL. Very much indicating he doesn't mess with this. So when you kind of connect the dots, he might have found out he wasn't going to be in the game when we found out that apparently he had opted out. That might have been something the dad or the family had decided. And I do admire and respect that they're trying to insulate him and bring him along slowly and not inundate the public with this guy when he's uh, still riding the bench at Texas. But at the same time, I got to think if if that's their reasoning to say, well, he's focused on playing football on the field and he wants to wait till he's the man, doesn't want to be a cyber backup. I think it's a bad look. Uh, this is the first time he really got skewered online. And I think him, I don't want to say bullying, you know, has an effect here, but he, there's a lot of pressure externally now, I think, from fans for him to be in this game that he's going to be uh, the butt of a lot of jokes now and throughout the game when it comes out if he doesn't change his mind. Unfortunately, fair or not, I think that's what's happening. Yeah. I mean, for sure. It, it, it he's young enough that he may have never played NC 14 or anything like that mm -hmm. and not really know the context of the game or anything. So he has no interest in signing up just because he doesn't know how mm -hmm. big it is or, or whatever. And maybe Cooper Manning doesn't really know the context of the game as well. Obviously, you know, Peyton mm -hmm. and Eli would have been in Madden for all those years. So they would have some context, mm -hmm. uh, but for the college game, it's, it's a little bit different, but to me, it, it, it this, want to be focused on playing football on the field to me that this is the opposite of that you know mm -hmm. they're they're only talking about this and only asking him questions about this or whatever because he's he said this if he had just signed the dotted line and walked away then mm -hmm. it wouldn't have have uh you know turned into anything nobody would have said anything nobody would have thought anything otherwise yeah, and I don't yeah, know why you been... that why you put this if his family response or if his family was the one why they responded because then it just why wouldn't you just say silence? Say, hey, we're still thinking about it. Yeah, there wouldn't be a news story if he signed it. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. there is. And now you see all these comments and mm -hmm. and some great ones too, by the way. But <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and and you know, if he didn't know about the game, well, if that was the case, then there wouldn't be ten thousand people already opted in because a lot mm -hmm. of those people may not have known about the game ten years ago themselves either. But mm -hmm. 
I, you know, I, I think whoever thought of that idea, family or whoever, I mean, but quit making decisions because this did completely backfired. And now mm -hmm. if he still is not in the game, you know, that's going to be brought up by people constantly once that game comes out in that, in but, that uh, roster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it'll be forgotten, you know, by August, September time frame. I mean, there, once mm -hmm. he starts actually uh, fall football camp, nobody's going to really care about that. I mean, yeah, maybe they ask him the first day of camp, but they're not going to mm -hmm. ask him, you know, the, the day before the, the opening game. Oh, but fans of the game, people that play the game are going to be bringing it up constantly. It's not going to go away. I don't think the jokes will go away either. I granted nope. it's not going to get the story coverage we got now where, I mean, this is everywhere because it's the off season. So this became a big story on a lot of college football sites, but this time a lot of the fans won't fans have long memories and people online have long memories. So I can expect a lot of QB 16 signs and a lot of, what were the names you've seen? Like March Anning names, you know, just fake names, you know, kind of mocking what they may or may not do with him. If he opts out, I realized I, he was going to get a 72 overall and didn't want his name attached to it. See, that is that's the kind of big theory is that he people are saying well, they don't want him to be, uh, you know, riding the bench in the game and real life, which they thought yours was going to go pro. So they thought he would be the starter this year. And that's not going to be the case unless something happens or unless he something happens in camp. Maybe he outperforms over yours. But you got to think there's two thirds of the quarterbacks in the game are all going to be bench warmers. Two thirds of the guys who have opted in are not starters. And you go to other positions, it's probably a higher percentage. Um, you would think with the hidden potential rating that when you get to year two and three of dynasty, Manning's probably going to be a pretty darn good quarterback and will be the starter at Texas. Yeah. And now he's being labeled a diva by some people because yeah. he's a Manning and he's being the only one to be really he's the first one. He's the face yeah, of first the one. deniers. Yeah. That's, so, he's yeah. the face, of the opt outs. <laughs> and so he's going to be tied to that for the, for unless he does a 180, which I mean, he should almost do immediately. Just do a 180 and donate that $600 to somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this will, this would go away as fast as it came up. Pete Nakos of on three and Matt Brown both tweeted Tuesday that they wouldn't rule him out yet, which I think makes sense. And I thought that at the time, there's still eight weeks. Maybe things get clarified to the Mannings. Maybe somebody explains, okay, well, you know, he's not locked this way forever. And if you play the game, like this dude's probably going to, he's a five-star quarterback. Guarantee year two of Dynasty, year three, he's probably going to be one of the better ones in the game. Which For is, sure, what, they, yeah. which is mean, what they expect in real life to happen too. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of time for him to opt in. I, I, I don't know of any reason he wouldn't, but I mean, I can kind of respect him on one hand. If he doesn't want to be in the game, don't be in the game. That's fine. You know, I have no problem with that. Uh, obviously I don't think their family is hurting for money. So that's, you know, that's not an issue there at all. But uh, at the same time, just don't just do it silently. I mean, don't, don't have the article come out and, you know, obviously they can't completely control the media and maybe one of his teammates leaked it to the press just to kind of put pressure on him or, you know, highlight that he is a diva or whatever it may be. Right. But uh, at the same time, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a personal decision. And if you're the third mm -hmm. string punter for Hawaii and you don't opt in, is that, you know, obviously it's, it's a little bit different, but still right. at the same time, just, just let it go away. You know, I think those quotes are what are going to haunt whoever, I don't know who, who said it, but it sure seems like that one about I'm told Arch is focused on playing football on the field. Well, if his family said that, you know, the immediate jokes everyone saw online were he does know he doesn't have to pick up a controller and play every time somebody selects him in the game, right? Like he doesn't have to warp into their game. This does not affect him one bit, but I, I agree with you. If, if this is a, honestly his choice to not be in it, that's cool. That's fine. I think I think the reasoning is I think it was really ruffled feathers. But it's also sure you to his fans. Maybe his fans want to play as him, and yep. now he's he's taking that away from his fans. That, that's a good point too. That, I think a lot of this is for the the fans. Yeah, these these players go through a lot and put their bodies on the line. And sometimes we think they're selfish, or but it's like all these guys are taking the big stars, not taking a huge amount of money because they want to be in there. They would take nothing. A lot of these guys. So I think you're right. If some the people who's Texas fans who want to do a. I don't know if you could do it. We don't know how Road to Glory is going to work or if they just wanted to put him in Dynasty as a starter and start right away with him. Can't do it. So it's, it's, so it's a rough look. But if that's truly his his wish, you know, good for him. But he's the face. He's got to take all – he's taking all the fire. The next guy who says he's not going to be in won't get nearly the amount of criticism unless they have a, a worse excuse or rationale. One guy who said he would do this game for free, Lane Kiffin, 
uh, visiting with Andy Staples, and this came out right before we started recording the show. I did not get to listen, so I'm just reading the quotes as you guys see it as well. Asked about being in the game. He said he'd do it for free. I would just let them do it. The kids like to play with it. When they're picking the team, you would want recruits to play with the coach. My brain thinks about what would help in recruiting. If you did pay me for that, I wouldn't want it. I'd want you to put it into our NIL, which he means probably the local collective. Lane is about, in my mind, one of the best coaches there is in understanding the off-the-field stuff, understanding social media, uh, you know, the art of the interview. There's not many better than him. That's why it makes a lot of sense to me that he would understand the importance of being in this game. And when the announcement of the teams, all 134 FBS being in, Ole Miss, right away, some of their coaches and the school put out, they were putting players on mock covers right away. Like they understand the recruiting aspect of this as well as any school in the country. So I thought that was kind of refreshing to see somebody come out and say, and we theorized this on previous shows, guys like Elaine, guys like a Deion Sanders, they would want to do this game for free because they understand the recruiting publicity it helps build. For sure. It's a marketing arm. You know, it extends their university any way to, to kind of just be in front of fans and players and, and whoever mm-hmm. else. You know, if you if you're the diva, then then players may not want to come and, and play for you. But mm-hmm. if you're flexible and say, hey, I'll do it for free, then they may say, oh, OK, well, you know, he, he's he may be the coach that I want to go play for. Yeah, now this could be something that kickstarts coaches into the, maybe the next game next year. This could be uh, uh, if this uh, if this continues to get publicity, and more coaches kind of get on board with that, that might force EA's hand to to add coaches to the game next year. I, I mean, I, I still think you're going to have plenty of coaches that don't do it for free, but at least maybe it, it opens the door for the conversation of you know we'll give you two thousand dollars or or whatever it is you know depending upon the the you know, how prestigious the coach is or something. Also came out that Colorado defensive back Shiloh Sanders will be in the game. This is kind of big news because Shadur Sanders has yet to put out anything indicating whether he will be in the game or not. A lot of people wondering if that means he will be a potential holdout or on the other side, maybe he's a cover athlete and we're waiting for big word on him. So to see the Shiloh goes in, I think shows that, yes, he's granted he's his own man, own individual. So maybe he will say yes and Shadur could say no. But I got to think the way that the Sanders family comes across, at least through the TV, a pretty tight, tight knit group. So you got to think if, if Shiloh's in, you know, Shadur is probably not too opposed either. Yeah, I agree. Like you said, he, you know, they are their own mm-hmm. own person, so they could go completely opposite directions, but you know, obviously mm-hmm. he's a very high profile athlete. Mm-hmm. So you would expect that he would want to be attached to the game in some way. And maybe he's holding out for more, or like you said, maybe he's the cover athlete, but mm-hmm. uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Shador joins him. I think it's just a matter of he just hasn't publicly done it. I would I would actually kind of be shocked if he decides not to be I agree. in the game. Yeah, and maybe he wants to do it kind of like a uh, you know, a recruit signing out of high school to where he, you know, makes a big deal out of a in front of a press audience or something like that and says, Yes, I'm in the game now or something. Or like some that. video. I'm surprised nobody's done a big exactly. video yet. Whether yeah, it be, yeah, even exactly. a school putting up the game, you know, the old version of the game on their big screen. I'm the schools of Slack, they've had big ways to present this and they have not done it. For sure. We're going to call that halftime here. We want to give a couple quick shout outs. Uh, first to JC's Pop Culture on Twitter. And he's also on YouTube. We want to thank him. He used our article on the new PA announcer, which will be our next story we get to in the game. He used that article for his video. He covers a lot of cool stuff on his channel, uh, new reviews and discussion, pop culture stuff, hence his name, JC's Pop Culture. Uh, so I really appreciate him using us and talking about us when he talked about the new PA announcer. Uh, another one, everything EA College Football on Twitter. They are at EA College Foot. They listed they about seven of their favorite, of their best EA College Football YouTubers, and we made the list number five. I don't know if that was in order, but I, I would just if he had listed fifty and put us in there, I would have been thrilled. So to see that we made the list of seven, so I thought that was pretty neat. He does whoever runs that site does a great job. Any kind of breadcrumb they find, they share that out on Twitter. And in the responses, I got to give another shout out to a community member, and we've mentioned him before. My favorite name, Pepe Schultz Schultz, at Schultz by Schultz. He replied that we should be number one. So guess who my favorite community member is, guys? Everyone else yeah, is tied for number he's, two. He's, he's right to the favorite. top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's my new favorite. So, uh, And also, then finally, to wrap up our shout-outs here at halftime, Shopmaster. On our podcast last week, he shared it on Twitter, and he recommended it to everyone who wanted to catch up on the EA Sports College Football News to check out the show. And he's a long-time guy. He's a young guy at heart, but he's been in the community a long time. The big Madden guy. I don't know if he still 
actively involved with EA and Madden. He should be, as much as he knows about Original the game. Original game passion. changer. He's one of yeah, the few. Sure. He's one of us. Yeah, he's one, one of the of first those. nine. Yep. <laughs> So I, I, I hope he's still very active with uh, EA and Madden because he's always been, he knows the game inside and out. So I, I said we really appreciate him putting a shout out for us as well on Twitter. So as you mentioned, when JC's Pop Culture uh, used our article, this is the one talking about Army's Rich DeMarco is the new EA Sports College Football 25 public address announcer. A little bit about Rich, what we've learned. I did not know him a week ago. Now I feel like I know his life story. He is the Army football and basketball play-by-play announcer. So that's a little bit different, you know, doing that radio work versus public address. And he mentions that even in the article, a little bit of a change. The Asbury Park Press is Jerry Carino interviewed him and talked to him about it. A couple of the highlights, he built a studio in his attic to record his lines, which I thought that was kind of interesting. All these guys are doing at-home recordings, which I think has to make it a lot easier uh, for EA's sake, at least, because if you want somebody in, it's just tell somebody, find your studio, whether that's uh, your smallest room in the house, as Chris Fowler has, or your attic, as Rich DeMarco has. Uh, but he talks a lot about cheaper your, too. Yeah, save a lot yeah, on flights don't on have time. To <laughs> travel and hotel and all that stuff. He said we recorded every eventuality you could have for a football game. For instance, there's a PA announcement for if a team lines up in the punt formation on an extra point, <laughs> you have to prepare for whatever the user in the game can do. We, he goes, we got into a number of specific things that fans can expect from their home stadiums that you only hear there. So it makes it sound like maybe they might have looked into some of the things the school sent in about how there may be different first down announcements, maybe the way they say touchdown in the arena. He says the goal of this game was, was to make it as authentic as possible. So he's, if you play Road to Glory in the past historically with the, with the previous P announcer, that's where you really get a lot of listening time to them because you don't have the announcers talking about it. So if it works that same way here in EA College Football, you're going to get to know Rich's voices pretty well. And he's he's the guy that in our article we went through and I found a clip of him talking. And he might as well, he has a great voice. So we'll play here a clip real quick. Some moments in games, you can see the setup and picture it. You play it out in your mind, but rarely does it turn out that way. The 2017 Army-Navy game was high drama. Army led 14-13 in a snowstorm in Philadelphia. Navy driving in the closing minutes. Midshipmen have a first down at the Army 23, which would line up as a 40-yard field goal to win the game. However, Navy commits two false start penalties and then sends out Bennett Mooring in the closing seconds for a 48-yard field goal. In the booth, we were hoping those 10 penalty yards would be the difference and cost Navy, and they did. So there's people out there with a voice like that, and people are listening to us talk on a podcast. That doesn't seem really fair in life, <laughs> does it, guys? I am kind of curious where the connection is coming from him. Obviously, you know, ESPN personalities is one thing, but for him, it's, it's, I don't know what the connection is. It, it, I'd be curious to know how they connected with him and he connected with them. You know, uh, was it something that they reached out to a diff- bunch of different schools or did, did somebody, you know, inside EA already know him, know him and say, Hey, let's go for him. I believe I read it that he auditioned. Um, I don't know okay. where I read that at, but I believe it might have said that in, in the NorthJersey.com article. But I want to think that, but off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure. But that's what what comes to mind is that he auditions. They must have put out a call. Now, whether that was just a regular job listing or if they have some kind of back channels for all these media guys, I, I don't know. But it is a good question because I'd be interested to know who else applied as well just for the sake of, you know, anybody local for any of us apply yeah. for this. But it's one of those, I'm sure there was probably a line out the door to do it. It sounded like from the article that that Rich played the game that he's very familiar with it. I think he, I got the feeling from the article like he played it and he understands like this isn't just another way to get money. This is this is something that means a lot to a lot of people that I want to do a good job and they know that there's going to be a lot of ears on it. So I, that's the impression I get, and I think that's one that makes it a little more. Uh, I don't say I don't know if rewarding is the right word, but it, it's good to hear that the person who's doing this understand it, it's a it's a passion for a lot of people. It's just interesting that it's not his regular job. It's a completely different job, but he got the job anyway. So. Yeah, it's a nice side job. Nice for yeah, he's, like, uh, he's like, well, if he uh, if, if he ever uh, decides to go into or doesn't have the 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 uh, play by play announcing, he can just go into being a PA announcer for somebody now because he's got proof in a video game. And that he's a pretty busy guy. If you go if, if you do football and basketball, which I know happens at quite a few schools, but you basically go from as soon as football ends, and sometimes there's overlap. You, then you're doing basketball like you're pretty busy so mm-hmm. i don't know if you crammed in another 40 hours of this uh that's a lot of work for a guy yep let's get to kevin connors he we know he's in the game he mentioned that on 
you know, the 22nd of February when all the ESPN talent mentioned they will be in the game. In real life, he does a lot of studio work. He's a lot of, if he's the halftime guy. You probably recognize his voice. He put, and that's a wrap on his social media. Shows a nice look at his home setup. Probably the same mic. I don't know if EA sends the computer as well. We get to see his choice of beverage. But wait, and I'm sure this was not a leak. This was intentional. We get a nice look at some of the script. And it talks, this script that is on his computer here is talking about a lot of halftime, a lot of rivalry games. And you can even see, I know it's for a bay at home, you, you can't see it. Uh, but if you go to his Twitter and look at it and click on the picture, you can zoom in and see, you even mentioned the context. And it all says halftime in terms of the tags on the text. So I think all but confirming that at halftime of the games, we're going to get some look-ins that maybe when they do a look-in at a rivalry game, this is some of the stuff he recorded for it. Yeah, for sure. It's it's neat to see kind of behind the scenes just how they're doing this, but obviously seeing how they, you know, how the script is sent out and and how they actually mm -hmm. go through these lines, you know. I think we've kind of seen some of that in the back in in the old days, I guess, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now to turn around and see it again here, you know, in the new game is is kind of nice to to see that they are kind of putting a focus that every rivalry in, in essence will have a, a special segment on halftime at, at some point. Because some of these are RV Navy, Auburn, Alabama, Ohio State, Illinois was one. I thought it was funny that you, <laughs> we don't get to see one from Michigan, which I'm sure is in there. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was funny they put the Ohio State, Illinois game uh, in that script as well. So we see that the, it's more than just like the big, big, big ones. Ohio State, Illinois, yeah, a rivalry, but it's not one that nationally you might not think of as much as some others. From what is social media and interactions and the articles, I think Kevin is much like Rich, as someone who I think who must have grown up either playing the game or respected a lot. And comes across as a good dude, uh, just from all all accounts that obviously we've never met these guys and wouldn't know them in a police lineup and they wouldn't know us either. But uh, they come across as guys who kind of recognize there's a big community out there. So I, I think that means a lot as well. Uh, it's nice to know that people who, you know, are putting their hours in, you know, respect the community and want to make a good project as well. But I was gonna say it's good to see a good a big cast for this first for this return to mm -hmm. the game. There it's a it's a wide and diverse cast uh, from ESPN and and uh, mm -hmm. so it's kind of good to see that, that a lot of people are on board and a lot of people are going to be involved in the, the uh, kind of the sights and sounds of mm -hmm. of the game for us. Yeah, that's one thing. Nobody wants to get still that year one because we know it's going to get a ton of hours. Everybody's going to put a lot since it's coming back. Yeah, let's continue talking presentation stuff. Jalen Prince, uh, last Friday before College Game Day in Tuscaloosa, had the chance to meet and interview Reese Davis. He had a chance to talk about the upcoming game with some quotes. Uh, so thanks to Jalen Prince for putting this on Twitter, first off. He says from Reese, they sent a clip of how it's looking. Still has some polishing to be done, but it's incredible what they do. It's going to be a remarkable game, and it's very much like the actual broadcast of a game. There's a lot of things that we're able to put in this game that we hadn't had the ability to do. We have opportunities in the game to talk about some of the legends who've played here within the game while you're playing it. Compare guys who are playing to Tua or Bryce Young or whoever. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So not earth shattering, but at the same time, it is nice. We do know some of the commentary stuff now between what we got from Kevin, Rich, and now Reese. This one talking about legends, which that happens all the time in real broadcasts, so why not in the video game? Do they yeah, for, possibly for have a Heisman ceremony? Makes you wonder that or just the ultimate team time and if they can bring in the rights now to talk about them in game a little bit and not worry about yeah. comparison. Yeah, to to me, yeah, it 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 means A, they have to license all of these legends if they're gonna mention them. But then I'm guessing for, you know, he mentions uh Tua and Bryce Young. Uh, I'm assuming the NFLPA license will they'll leverage it here as well. You know, maybe mm -hmm. they pay them a little extra for it, but it allows them to at least kind of actually act like those players do exist instead of you know, acting like they, they're no longer alive after they yeah. leave college, you know, they graduate so, and you never see them again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it is nice to to hear that they're going to kind of incorporate that. Cause that's the first I've seen something about that. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, but it's the first I've seen mentioned. Now in terms of equipment, a lot of people have been wondering, you see it online, what's the swag going to be like? Well, we know that some of the core stuff, at least we may not know all the alternate uniforms and what accessories last week, shut sports puts out a tweet. We're in the game. And as well, then Vices went out and did the same. We're in the game. They are those companies merged back in 2021. So this isn't necessarily it might be two different brands, but it's not two different companies. I looked around. I did not see anything for Zenith yet in terms of helmets. And Riddell did put this out about two weeks ago. They put out a mock cover 
on Instagram saying, how about the head protection leader on the front cover of Sports College? We didn't get that phrasing. We're in the game. That seems to be, if you see that, then you can kind of take it as meaning something for the most part, unless it's a Canadian college. But if you see it from a legitimate school or organization or sponsorship, but we did not get that for Riddell, but I got to think Riddell and I got to think Zenith will be in the game. Those those are the two kind of big brands and helmets that I can think of off the top of my head. I'd be shocked if they're not, but we have not got that confirmation yet. Yeah, the, the biggest thing is they've got to make sure that w no matter what helmets they put in, that they put in a lot of variables and options. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously in, in the old game, there were quite a few different options, but at the same time, mm -hmm. they didn't keep up with it from year to year. So mm -hmm. that's the big thing is now obviously a big push to get the latest ones, but then next year and the year after, you got to make sure you you keep up with that. Speaking of what may or may not be in the game, Matt Brown joined Trasher Football. Here he talks to him a little bit about Team Builder, which may or may not be in the game, along with user customization. Not really. All right, so I know that you are not really allowed to talk about Team Builder, like you said on Twitter, without EA blocking your number. But can you comment on what you talked about is how EA is going straight forward with user con uh, created content? Yeah, so I have seen internal memos and, and things communicated to different developers and different people in the company that would... How can I say this without getting yelled at? Uh, further speak to the idea that user-generated content is going to be important in this game. And I would say that if you are a fan and your chief concern right now is that you will not have a team builder-like experience, I would say, I think you should relax. Um, what you choose to take from what I just said is between you and God, because I cannot specifically say, I think, the 10 words that you'd like me to say, but... You know, take 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 that statement for what it's worth. Okay. So after hearing that, let's go to the In the Game podcast. He joined the host, and they talked again about Team Builder. Let me play that clip as well, and then after, I'll ask you guys, do you think Team Builder is in based on what Matt Brown has said? So I would not expect playoff options that extend beyond what, what's currently there. What I can tell you, and... I can't, I have to use my words carefully, right? What I can tell you is that I have seen internal documents that I promised I wouldn't explicitly one-to-one -one share the contents of. And I've talked to people on the company who have said, user customization and user-generated content is a priority and a theme of this release. Because I get asked questions about team builder or changing mm -hmm. uniforms or many of those other things. So... While I can't specifically say Team Builder is in the game or that this exact customization feature is in the game, I can say user and custom content is a priority in this coming release. And whatever you want to take from that statement is between you and God. So <laughs> hopefully that answers some of your questions. No, that's, that's great. That's great. All right. So after seeing those two clips, guys, how would you wager on Team Builder? We initially in our prediction so said, don't expect it year one. Does that change your expectation expectation level for a college school twenty five? I would say it's. I mean, obviously the way he phrased it, it sounds like yes. It's a. It's almost a guarantee that it's in the game in some format. Though the thing is, it may not be the same old Team Builder. You may not be able to build out a fully customized team. You know, it may be various ways they can do it. So, uh, you know, set your expectations low and then be pleasantly surprised if you're wrong kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, from, from the sounds of it, it seems like in some form or fashion, there's going to be a version of team builder. What were the 10 words that he was saying? Like teasing or whatever. I think he yes, means it team as builder is in the game or something like that. Yeah. I think that's what he meant. I don't think he would. I thought that too first, but I don't think there's an exact sentence. I think he was just saying like, if you want me to say this exact sentence, I'm not going to say it. Like, yes or no, it's in the game. I believe that's what he was inferring to with that statement. So would you say, JB, yes or no, based on that? Initially, I think we all were in agreement, like on the prediction show, probably not year one. I don't know. Based on what he said, I'm thinking there might be a chance of something along those lines. I mean, why is he? Why would he say relax for those that are wanting to, you know, I don't, I don't know. It, it, I don't think he wants to cause any extra false information so why would he even say that to begin with i mean he almost gave it away without giving it away 
Yeah, well, and that's the thing is he he was saying he can't say it explicitly. So I mean, he was kind of towing up to the line as as close as he could. And if you, I've watched it several times, getting ready for the show notes, and even my first heard of the show, leading up to it, he says, if you want a, you know, looking for a user generated content experience like Team Builder, so it's one of those more I listen to it, I think well. I think he's trying for that. There's a lot you can customize an option. So it isn't like you can't edit or create. So I don't know. I went, I was initially like you guys, I was up to the line. Like this might be in the game. I'm a little back beyond the line, but I'm not back to where I was three months ago when I would have told you there was no chance, but I agree with you. It seems like we're getting everything, but yes, it's in the game. He has also been the one who has said from the get go for a long time, game days in the game, which I know contradicts what Kirk said earlier. But Matt has been pretty insistent, basically saying expect college game day. So we will find out sooner than later, you know, who who had the goods and who did not have the goods. And and he may have for the game day part part, he may have said, Oh, all of these personalities that are on game day right. are in the game. So therefore they've got to have some version of game day or something like that. Right. You know, but again, who knows the you know, he's connecting dots the same way we are. He's obviously got a lot closer access than, than anything we do. But uh, but yeah, I mean, he's not inside the studio making decisions and sitting in on meetings, uh, you know, like he's he's not an EA employee. So speaking of what Matt may or may not know, I thought this part of his interview again on Trasher football uh, was interesting. I'll just play this clip. When, when I would regularly talk to developers in, in December and January, the answer is the game's not ready yet. So I can't tell you because we don't we don't know what's going to be in or out of the of the final build. The game is more ready now. Like I've, you know, I, I've seen demos of it. Like I've I've I know of, of the build that, that's being passed around and it's being updated all the time as they adjust the sliders and everything. So there's a couple of sentences there that changed my perspective on what Matt may or may not know. I don't know if you guys didn't catch that. I've seen demos of it. Like I know of the build that's being passed around. It's being updated all the time as they adjust the sliders and everything. This seems like we've crossed the line of getting information through FOIA requests to I know something you don't know and I've seen things you you have not seen. Am I, and there is something, and I did not get the time mark. I apologize to the community. Uh, mentioned, he mentions later about signing embargoes, which I can understand if he had seen something on the school side, maybe EA finally said, hey, we'll talk with you and clarify these points, but you've got to sign an NDA. So that I that I can understand EA doing that and Matt signing that. But then when you combine it with that sentence we just played, do you think Mr. Brown all of a sudden is way more connected than we initially thought? Yeah, I mean, I, I like you said, I think it's kind of evolved. It, it's gone from him kind of pushing for your requests and EA finally saying, all right, you're, you know, a thorn in our side so we'll we'll bring you into the fold a little bit just to kind of uh you know tailor the conversation however they want to in some regard so um yeah i mean clearly it sounds like he has some level of access to to the to the game mm -hmm. that uh the the average person doesn't uh if he's seeing demos and things like that and then at the same time it, he he points out that they mm -hmm. were you know january december still deciding what, what was in the game mm -hmm. i think we've kind of been behind those scenes as well in the past and kind of know what that budget conversation looks like of, yes, we've been developing these features. And then mm -hmm. by December, January, you have to start actually setting what's actually going to be in the game so that you can make sure your focus is there and everything. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, it, it lines up with what, what we've heard in the past as well. Mm -hmm. So speaking of what may or may not be in the game, might have to pull a Lee Corso here and say, not so fast, my friend, uh, on the previous show, we talked about the recent Senior Bowl put out this tweet saying Senior Bowl mode, EA Sports College to EA Madden NFL. The draft starts in mobile and even the proper hashtag and this nice graphic. So I think a lot of us generally assumed that means they were in the game. Should have known we did not get the it's in the game messaging, which seems to be what you got to have if you're legit. So again, again, now let's go back to Trasher football. He asked the very question he wanted to know about the Rick's Senior Bowl. His community wanted Matt to give some more information. We find out things may not be as they seem. All right, so this is one of the more interesting things to me is recently the Reese's Senior Bowl was confirmed to be a part of the game. Do you have any information uh, on how it will be? They be were not. They were not? No, they posted something on Instagram. And what I would, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that they're not in the game. I am saying that they're not confirmed to be in the game. And I would beg everybody to exercise caution and, and skepticism 
when you are looking at anybody or anything confirmed in the game because you know I, I, am i am i am i allowed to, to cuss on this channel oh you you are allowed to do whatever you want okay there's been so many random organizations and schools that have put out instagram <laughs> posts that aren't in the game because they're just having fun right i did that um there was a a school in in saskatchewan who did this I and mean, i would have people dming me like we're going to have Canadian college football games in here. No, there's not division three teams. There's not division two teams. There's not NAI teams or high school teams or, or Canadian teams. And when you see something on Instagram of somebody making their own version of the game, that is not sufficient information for YouTubers or aggregators or anybody else to say, oh my God, this is confirmed. So that's the only thing that's out there right now. And I've texted people at electronic arts about it. And I'd like what I've gotten back is, we are not saying anything in public or internally about the Reese's Senior Bowl or any other non-college football controlled IP. Okay, well, my apologies. I mean, you know, the Reese's Senior Bowl Twitter account posted it, you know, a few days ago. So I thought it was basic information. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Um, and just... uh, yeah, uh, it, j j j uh, forgive me if I came off a little bit hot there. No, it's just it's like... okay. He did come off Those hot there. didn't bring up admit. FCS there. <laughs> that is a good point. I wish they had somebody <laughs> that pushed that issue. So we do have to, I think, take Senior Bowl off the board. I'm going to say based off what I, he said and talking with I EA. So. I mean, if, if we had it in our Info Central page, it's been removed. I'm going to say it's not in the game at this point until we hear something different. I, I would say it's not confirmed to be in the game. But again, True. it could be that they figure out a way to do it without the Reese's sponsorship. Maybe that was the problem is they couldn't do it with Reese's mm -hmm. senior bowl. Instead, they've just done it as a senior bowl or something like that. It sounded like he was phrasing it. Reese's senior bowl is not going to be in the game or something, but, but he was trying to stress it to me in, 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 in one way or another, but yeah, long story short, it's, uh, it's something that I know a lot of people have been asking for, so it'll be interesting to see if it does shake out and come in the game. I, I do say it's an annoying thing that uh, obviously EA is not saying anything. They can't; they're not saying one way or the other if it's included. So it kind of gives everybody, you know, free reign to say, "Hey, I'm in the game." When in reality, there's there's no way to confirm or deny that. You know, I saw Rich Demarco. He put out a tweet around that same time. I think of the ESPN talents. I, I could be wrong on the date, but. He put out a tweet early on that said, hey, I'm in the game. I'm the PA announcer and used the hashtag, I think, EA partner. I saw that and I thought it was a joke because on my timeline, when I searched by that, there was one for, um, I believe, a Kansas State fan podcast that put out a graphic saying, we're in the game, hashtag EA partner. Um, there was somebody else saying, oh, I'm the random fan at, I can't remember what school or stadium. I'm the random fan in the crowd at this stadium, hashtag EA partner. I saw, even saw Rich's pretty early on and I kind of blew it off thinking, but I I'm like I okay, I think that guy's joking. Well, no, so some of these are correct. It's just we don't know which ones. So I don't know when we're gonna work on our gaming tailgate. We're in the game graphic and post <laughs> to put out there. I think everybody would know better. And we're gonna end the show with something that been talked around the community a little bit. When the ESPN talent announced their in inclusion in the game, the the seven in guys from ESPN, later that day, on the very same day, we had Holly Rowe and Molly McGrath both saying, How about getting some women in the game? Let's look at Molly's tweet here. So exciting talking about the guys getting the game. I really hope EA Sports College includes female broadcasters as well. Women are a huge part of college football. Holly Rowe, how about including some women in EA Sports 30 years on the college football sidelines? Interesting. It's one of those, yeah, I don't disagree that, you know, the women play an important role, especially on the sideline reporter aspect. We've had that in the past in the game with Aaron Andrews. I know technically there's a bit of a challenge in the past. I remember when they, they added Aaron Andrews, you have to have, you know, the base commentary you know, the, the two guys, wherever they be, whether it be Kirk and Chris, which we assume. But then you have to also put this logic of when and why they go to the sidelines and what is the sideline person talking about and the transition back. And do they talk about what the sideline reporter talked about? Do they go back to their previous talking points? Uh, I, I could be wrong. I don't I have no clue uh, the design process and why they did or did not do things. But I got to think the reason we did not get females or sideline reporters or female sideline reporters uh, could be it's year one. I mean, if they got seven different seven guys doing different broadcast elements, I can see where they might not want to have tackled this. And I, the women part is a uh, tougher debate because also then you're debating qualifications and you're looking at gender versus qualifications. And I don't want to get into that because <laughs> I don't feel like getting canceled on my own show. But uh, it's one of those that I know Holly and Molly. They're probably the two that if they add sideline reporters would be among the first considered in the future. Uh, Katie George is another one, Laura Rutledge. Those those four were the ones that did the college bowl playoff sideline, one for each team. 
Uh, but ESPN has a lot of good sideline reporters. Uh, just looking at their roster before we started the show, they have Andrea Carter, Kayla Brown, they have Quint Kucinich, they have Tom Luganbill. And Tom Luganbill, we know he can act because he and Dave Pash were in Batman versus Superman. They had a cameo as the ESPN announcers in the game when they did a football game. So he's used to acting and doing things on the side. So uh, it's an interesting debate. I don't think EA went out to look to exclude women. I think it just, when they hired the roles, that's the guys have the bigger roles. Yeah, and I mean, you touched on it as well with with the in the old in I don't remember what year it was. Was it like twelve maybe that they first introduced Aaron Andrews? But then at, by the fourteen, they've they basically all but phased her out completely. Mm-hmm. It's tough to kind of include that that you know back and forth in a short game when your your people are fast forwarding through as much content as they can just to get to the game so it, mm-hmm. the more layers you add to that the more difficult it is and and everything you know i feel for molly and holly and you know i would love to have them in the game as well but mm-hmm. uh at the same time it's it's uh you know part of its logistics part of it's uh just a matter of uh you know what will the fans want uh mm-hmm. in some regard you know, if they add coaches next year, you could add uh, the sideline reporters running to the center of the field after the game. That would make way chase, more sense. Yeah, to chase yeah. after the coach to get the interview for a post game interview. And like, if you're doing a dynasty or something, or if you're if they have some kind of head coaching mode or something where you're, you're focused as the coach, you, know, you could maybe answer questions and maybe uh, you know they could branch off that, and that could be a a good way to include them in the game in the future. Yeah, and maybe it's even as simple as uh, before halftime and after halftime, they kind of have the the segment of, yeah, I talked to the coach, you know, going into the locker room, and he said this, that, and the other. It's also one of those things that when you take it on just on its face, if you ask a fan, if you ask us or the community, would you like to see Holly Rowe or Molly McGrath as sideline reporters in the game? You're going to get 90% of people saying, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, would you rather have Molly McGrath and Holly Rowe, or would you rather have college game day? Would you rather have... Holly, you know, Holly and Molly, or would you rather have stadium sounds? It all be, it's all a, you can't just add everything you want. It's got to be, if you add in something, there's something else that's not getting in as, as a result. And right now we don't know the feature set. So maybe there is something in the game that will say, boy, they shouldn't have done this. They should have put in the sideline girls. <laughs> but obviously right now it's way too early to tell that, but it's not one of those. You can't just say, do you want this? Because the answer is always yes. I don't think there's yeah, anything it, you could ask where people say, no, we don't want that. It's always, oh yeah, I want that. Well, do you want more than this? No, I don't want it more. <laughs> no, I want that other thing more than this. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, it, it's a matter of everything that EA adds. It is, quote unquote, a budget. Whether you're talking about money or time or whatever, there's a budget and a limited budget at that. So, you know, it's a matter of what you can fit in and what gives the best bang for the buck for when they do add it. <laughs> Yeah, and we know well from our time being at EA and behind the scenes years ago that there are costs, uh, there are casualties to certain mm-hmm. things just because limitations and time and things like that. And there, there's a whole list of things that do get crossed off. And so mm-hmm. obviously this is probably something that is on the table, but yeah, unfortunately there are things that do need to get cut. And that happens with every every game, especially at EA, but with a year early title. So with that, we will wrap up this edition of the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. Please leave us a five-star review, comment, like, subscribe, do whatever you can. Uh, if it only takes a second, it helps us out more than you realize. For Tommy and JB, I'm CDJ. Everyone, thank you for checking out this edition of the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. <laughs>